All right, friends, it's time to give you loyal listeners a discount on protein powder. You may or may not know, but I launched my very first protein powder two years ago. It's a grass-fed beef isolate with only three ingredients, grass-fed beef, either organic cacao or organic vanilla, and organic monk fruit. Now, if you don't want any of the added flavor and sweeteners, you can also just get unflavored. And no matter what flavor you choose, you're getting over 23 grams of protein per scoop, which is gonna keep you full and satisfied between meals. I love starting my day with a Fab Four smoothie and breaking my fast with that much protein. It makes a serious difference in my cravings and blood sugar balance the rest of the day, and I've seen it with my clients as well. Now, I never thought I'd own a product company, but when I got pregnant with Sebastian, I realized the majority of protein powders were chemically extracted or enzymatically extracted, and I wanted to use heat and water only. I wanted minimal ingredients because we don't need those emulsifiers, fillers, or added vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. All of those additions increase the chances that it's not gonna work for your body, whether it be bloating, digestion issues. I just wanted pure clean protein to keep you full and satisfied so you could build the most delicious Fab Four smoothie. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of the flavor. If you take a look at our reviews on Amazon, you'll see five-star reviews for flavor. And that is key because if you don't love your Fab Four smoothie and you don't love drinking your protein powder, you're not gonna do it. It won't become a habit and it's consistency that outpaces everything. So. If you're here and you're listening and you want to give our protein powder a try, use the code PODCAST5 for $5 off your order. And let me know if you love it. My favorite ways to apply this protein powder is in my Fab Four smoothie, making freezer fudge, making chocolate milk, making hot chocolate, and throwing the unflavored into all my kids' baked goods. So let me know how you use it. Let me know if you love it. And share this podcast deal with your friends. Austin McGuffey, aka The Metabolism Mentor, is a content creator who is fascinated with how the human body works. He was a former personal trainer and he leans on that experience to create videos that make the concept of metabolism easy to understand. He's a husband, a father, and creating generational health is among his top priorities. One way he's doing that is through a production company that he founded with his wife called Nourish, where they house personal brands like Metabolism Mentor and partner with companies to create entertaining and informative health content. Ultimately, he wants to instill his passion for health in others who desire to feel better but may not know where to start. His passion is supporting the Black community to understand how healthy swaps and habits can support their blood sugar balance and the prevention of chronic lifestyle diseases. Let's welcome Austin to the show. So we will get to talk about um, all your basically life transition into training, into like learning about the metabolism and mitochondrial health. Um, yes. and kind of like, how do you take care of your family and your clients and yourself? And, um, yeah. And let me tell you, this is a, a full, so I've had a few full circle moments since I started, um, focusing on metabolic health. And this is one of them because I think I have to give credit to my wife and I have to make sure I do that because <laughs> yeah. sometimes I forget and then she'll listen to the podcast and she'll be like, you know, I'm the one that did it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, she was, um, I think, the first person that really mentioned to me insulin resistance because we were training some clients and it just wasn't going how it was supposed to. And then she mentioned it to me. And then she actually went and pursued a um, certified functional nutrition coaching certification through My Body Green. Um, so, of course, exactly. That's um, me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, that was her knowledge base through there and then kind of telling me everything she learned and i might have peaked at all of the sessions yeah <laughs> uh, the, the you guys got a as twofer. well <laughs> exactly that's exactly what we did uh, so i told her to print the certification out and kind of write my name on it too yeah um but yeah that that's that was um so this is it's like a, a culminating moment because that was a part of my origin story, learning more about metabolic health was um, going through those modules, of course, seeing your face, Dr. Taz, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Pedre. And um, yeah, so this, this, is, this is really cool for me. Just wanted to let you know that. 
Oh, Austin, that makes me so happy. Well, this is really cool for me too, because just, um, you know, the levels team loves you and like just learning about what you're doing. It's like, we need feet on the street. Like people need yeah. to be like coaching people through these transitions to make these changes because it, it sometimes is like, well, it's still not enough looking at the numbers of like how yeah. many people are facing these chronic lifestyle diseases and to have yeah. just like a couple doctors or people preaching or writing books about it. Like I know a bunch of my friends would never sit down and read a book about metabolic health. Exactly. And that was one of the reasons why. So I actually had for a long period of time while I was talking about this, I had a period of time where I felt very insecure in the fact that I wasn't credentialed enough to, to speak on these things. Um, and then I had a conversation with um, Dr. Lustig and he's like, hey, listen, like you don't need to go and be the doctor. The research is already out there. We need people to communicate this stuff so people can understand it. And that's something that I am good at. It's something I've always been good at is breaking down complicated topics and communicating in a way that makes it easy for people to grasp it and understand it. So that's the mission that I'm on. Of course, it started with personal training. And on a previous episode with Levels, I mentioned that I sucked as a personal trainer <laughs> uh, because I just I just didn't care about the, you know, the the Instagram, the look, you know, mm -hmm. the, the muscles, the, you know, all the glute workouts that, you know, we're supposed to be teaching. Uh, it just wasn't important to me. Um, I've had several clients who are like, hey, Austin, I want to look like you. I want abs. I want all this. Yeah. Give me your muscles. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we can. But first, I want you to go to CVS and get a comprehensive health screening. And let's start there. And so we get the, the health screening back and triglycerides are through the roof. The HDL is through the floor. And it's like, hey, before we get to these apps, let's, um, let's talk about this situation we have going on. And for some reason, it just it just didn't resonate. So I spent a lot of time figuring out how to communicate the importance of this because it's like, yeah, abs are great, but you want to be alive long enough to enjoy them. And right. oftentimes those looks can be deceiving because they don't tell the full story of like what your metabolic health is. So after I realized, like, okay, maybe training is, you know, for someone else who wants to focus on abs and glutes, um, my wife and I, we just really like dug deep and went in the lab and started educating ourselves and um, we just started talking about it some more. And then that's how Metabolism Mentor was born because I don't see myself as um, the authority. I kind of see myself as an intermediary. Like I want to help you understand the basics of this stuff so that you can go and listen to a podcast by Kelly Levette. And this stuff is actually going to make sense for you because you remember that Austin was talking about um, dancing in the kitchen after eating a cookie or something crazy like that. So that's kind of like the whole mission behind it. Oh, I love this Austin so much. I feel like you're preaching to the choir. Like, <laughs> I just want to keep going and let's just, let's keep telling your story. And I want you to explain to me, first, I want to say, it's really amazing that you have people go to CVS to get a comprehensive health screening because, and I just want everyone listening to like, hear that again. CVS has a comprehensive health screening. You do not have to find a doctor to call for certain things. You don't need to know what to look for. So what are they getting with that comprehensive health screen at CVS? And what are you looking at as a metabolism mentor to help them understand their health? Right. So first of all, the comprehensive health screening is less, it's, it costs less than $100 to get done. I think it's $70 unless they've increased the price. Um, but you go in, it takes less than like 15 minutes and you're going to get your total cholesterol. So um, um, HDL, LEL, and triglycerides. You're going to get your A1C and you're going to get your blood pressure. I wish they did fasting insulin. Maybe they'll get there eventually. I know. That's a hard but, one. Um, and then you're going to get your fasting glucose as well. And with those things, you can pretty much paint a picture of what your metabolic health looks like. And when I see that, you know, you want to see low triglycerides, high HDL, um, you know, normal levels of LDL and a fasting glucose, you know, ideally below 90. Um, but, you know, the normal range, I guess, is between 90 and 100. Um, but it's, it's really, I encourage people to go 
because number one, I think there's this unspoken barrier between people and their relationship with, with the doctor's office. They, they don't want to go. Right. Um, and because you don't want to go, you're not getting insight into like what's going on inside your body. So going there and getting the results and getting papers and then talking to somebody like me, who's, I'm not going to prescribe you a statin because I don't have the credentials to do that. Yeah. But at least I can tell you like, hey, this is what you should be looking at. Um, and this is what's important. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I love that. And, and so I want to make a note. Um, you can take this fasted or non-fasted, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in a fasted state, glucose range somewhere between 60 and 80, non-fasted 90 and a hundred. Right. Um, awesome. So let's say I'm a new client. And mm -hmm. I come with my CVS comprehensive health screening and I don't know anything. Like, where do you start with clients? Like, what, what science do you want them to know? Um, I think the best place to start is with um, fasting glucose and just explaining that, hey, this is, I think the easiest way to explain it is this is a representation of how your body is using energy. Um, if your fasting glucose is too high, then that means that it's not being stored properly. That means there might be some insulin resistance going on. And if your fasting glucose is low, then it's like, okay, great. And your body is using this form of energy the way that it's supposed to. And then you go into explaining, well, how do you get your body in an optimal state where it's using energy efficiently? And then that's when you talk about the importance of movement, not just exercise, not just glute workouts, but <laughs> movement. Like, are you moving throughout the day? Um, and then what foods are you eating that are impacting your blood sugar? Obviously, then you get into um, carbohydrates and um, the importance of pairing them with fat and protein um, and fiber, of course. Um, gosh, it's, the conversation can go, it goes so many different ways. But one of the things that I, that I run into a lot when talking to people about this is a basic, a lot of people just don't have a general like understanding of like what this stuff is. And I don't know about you, but when I talk to people who don't have the understanding, I like to get nerdy sometimes. So I'm like, yeah, like your glucose, and then this is with insulin. And oh yeah, and you have a glucagon and all these things. And then their eyes start to gloss over. They're starting to look around and it's like, okay, I just lost you. Yeah. Um, so giving small pieces of information that are actually, that they can actually use um, is I think my number one priority. So not going through like, the whole shebang talking about the Krebs cycle and all of <laughs> energy metabolism. We're like, just like the basics, this is energy. This is how your body's using it. And these are the top three things that you can be doing to shift the, uh, the nature of how your body is metabolizing energy. I think when we, you know, first started talking, it's it, we can find that, there are experts and doctors using all, uh, you know, biochemical terms and um, kind of speaking above people's heads. And then they're unable to just execute in their own life ways or techniques to lower their blood sugar, to get better sleep, to understand how exercise or movement can affect their mitochondrial health or, you know, just let's break it down. The burning of energy, right? And the exactly. storing of energy. We don't even need to talk about mitochondria. <laughs> right, but exactly. That's, but that's, you know, that's um, you know, that's where I think there's a huge opportunity for people. When people say like I don't, you know, I'm not going to become a health coach or I'm not going to, you know, even just become a trainer or or um uh, or a yoga instructor and or I'm I'm just a yoga instructor. I don't want to tell people about what they should eat. But a lot of times it's like you're you are their mentor. You are their right. coach. You're the person talking to them all the day, all the time about what's in their cabinet, what they're eating, what they're feeding their kids, what their cravings are like. Their doctor is spending 15 minutes with them mm -hmm. and he, they're not giving them the tools. So you just mentioned three things. You'll sit down and say, okay, there are three things that you can do to yeah. improve your health. What are those three things that you start with? Um, so what we just recently talked about was sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, the importance of sleep, um, there are a lot of um, studies that suggest that um, we are a lot more insulin resistant when we're sleep deprived. 
So that's a great place to start is like getting some sleep. And then the second thing is not eating naked carbs. Um, if you're eating carbs, you should probably pair it with some fat or some protein. I think one of the things that I love to do is one of the things I've learned to do after monitoring my blood sugar with levels, shout out to levels. Yeah, we um, love levels. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, I like to put my food in a bowl. And so I put my carbs on the bottom um, and then I'll put my um, protein, fat or vegetables on top. And I start with what's on top. And then by the time I make my way to the carbohydrates, I will have already eaten my protein, fat and fiber or my protein and fat. And then when I get to the carbs, I can start to use my satiety signals to figure out whether or not I'm hungry and whether or not I should continue eating. And if I don't continue eating, then it's like, okay, great. I got the most nutritious part of the meal out of the way because I put it at the top of my bowl. And if I'm still hungry, great. I can enjoy the carbs because I just paired it with fat fiber and um, protein. So that's, wow. yeah. <laughs> Such an easy tip though, but like so actionable because all people need to exactly. do is start plating in a bowl. And they're mm-hmm. going to do it and they know your formula and they work their way from the top to the bottom. And exactly what you're saying, we know the research tells us that eating protein first is going to slow the digestion of those carbohydrates and you and also be the most satisfying. Like yeah. it's those type of simple tips where I'm already like, hmm, is there some pretty bull pottery that I'm going to buy for, yeah. for my family? Because, you know, thinking about it, even just with my kids, like, you, play, you played a lunch for your child and we'll talk about the four kids you have and how your strategies for doing this with your family too. But like, yeah, if you play, played it on one of those like like toddler silicone plates, you know that they're going to go for the grapes or the crackers <laughs> or the toast first and then Every time. what's left. Yeah. I Every love single that. time. Yeah, that's something that I've learned personally. And that's, I think, teaching from personal experience is always the best way for the knowledge to resonate with people, at least for me. And then when you get into um, cultural norms and um, things like that, it makes it easy for people to adapt because it's, hey, that person kind of lives a life like me. And if that works for him, then maybe it'll work for me. Um, right. So that's the second thing is the pairing your foods. And then the second is it's just movement or the third. The third mm-hmm. thing is um, movement, is moving your body. Not just, I think that um, that fitness culture has been such a, a wonderful thing, um, but it also is, you know, it has its, its drawbacks because I think we've developed an, an all or nothing mentality where it's either five to six days in the week in the gym or no days a week in a gym. And we've completely thrown out the window how essential just general movement is throughout the day. Like you can go to the park and play around with your kids for 45 minutes. And that's just as effective as you, okay, maybe not just as effective, but it's, it's good enough for, for you to use it as your exercise for the day instead of dragging yourself to the gym, being someone that you don't want to be and trying to... Um, maintain a habit that may not be sustainable for your lifestyle. And then you throw that away and you're left with, uh, with nothing. So movement is, is so important, not just movement in general, but um, utilizing movement as a tool. I like to, um, I enjoy food. And yeah, me too. I, it's like many of us. And sometimes I, I eat food that I, you know, so I know I shouldn't be eating. And instead of putting myself through a guilt trip, or trying to completely abstain from it, knowing I'm going to relapse eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I use the tools that I have in my tool belt, like movement. And so if I'm eating a, a healthy granola bar that I know is going to spike my blood sugar, <laughs> I'll just eat it while I'm walking my kid to the park. And that way I avoid the blood sugar spike and I still, you know, met my craving for this granola bar. So it's just implementing some habits that, allow me to still feel like a human being. Um, but then that keep me at optimal levels of health at the same time. Oh, you know, it's, it's these simple techniques and it's, I think, giving yourself grace. You said, you know, you don't have a, give yourself a guilt trip or you don't feel bad about it. Like that is so much of the process with clients yeah. that you're working with or people you're mentoring, because it is, it's that 
It's that guilt and shame that causes those really restrictive behaviors. Like I'm never going to have a granola bite of my kid's granola bar. Like when Chris, my husband orders donuts, like, yeah. like I'm not going to have a bite, you know, like if it's, it, it's not an everyday thing, but it also, it's what you're saying. It's like, how much mental energy are you, t- are you taking to say like, I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it. I'm not gonna, like, you're not even present for your kids. You're just focused exactly. on not eating the donut. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, how can we, how can we enjoy that? And for me, like, even just thinking about it, like I'll have, I'll make the smoothie if I know he's ordered donuts. Cause I'll have, try to have a couple sips of that. It's kind of like your bowl technique. It's like, I'll fill myself up with that protein, fat fiber, those, that produce. And then when the donuts get here, I may just have a bite or two just to quench that craving, but I'm not going to feel bad about it because it's the, exactly. it's that shame that right causes us to spiral and yo-yo and be like really restrictive. Exactly. And we see it so often, or I know I do personally, if you just, you can follow someone's life journey, just through social media mm-hmm. of a family friend. And one year it's, I'm going keto. And then the next month is I'm going to um, try one meal a day. And then I'm going to do a smoothie fast and you're doing all these things. And I think the the tragedy is that if you just took the same amount of energy that you're putting into those um, diets or approaches to extreme eating and you pour the energy into understanding how your body works, then you can kind of approach these, um, you can approach your diet with a little bit more flexibility and um, freedom without the guilt. Totally. And then understanding that your body is, is so resilient. Like, man, I used to work at Wendy's when I was a teenager and it was it was burgers, fries, nuggets, soda, and a bag of candy every day, five days a week. Um, and at the time, I did have pretty terrible health. Um, but when I realized it and I turned things around, of course, with the help of some good genetics, I mean, it didn't take long for me to get my health back on the right track. And so one donut isn't going to tear up your metabolic health. And I don't think that we need to to fear you know, the the foods that are, are not good for us. It's just, how do we eat them strategically in a way that I can continue to be healthy? Yes. And and I, I mentioning that if we took that energy to understand our health, then we understand that we are resilient. We understand that that donut is going to spike our blood sugar, but that when we're active and our muscles are insulin sensitive, that we're going to put that, pull that into muscle instead of, you know, causing elevated blood sugar, causing elevated triglycerides, causing and laying the foundation of inflammation. I I feel like, I don't know about you, but I feel like blood sugar, understanding blood sugar and our metabolism is freeing. It isn't, it isn't shackles that makes us feel guilt. Yeah. That's why it's, it's, I I tote such a thin line, especially with social media, because as like metabolism mentor, a lot of people expect for me to I don't know, people think I'm vegan for some reason. <laughs> like, yeah. They think I'm vegan or or vegetarian, or you know, they'll see me and they're like, "Oh, I can't eat that around Austin." It's like, "Hey, like I eat that too. Yeah. I enjoy that too. I just I do it strategically, and I get messages um, almost every day, and people are like, "Oh my gosh, thank you so much for posting this because I've been feeling bad because I've been cheating on my diet," and I'm like, "Listen, you're not." cheating on your diet. The fact that you even acknowledge this food decision is progress. It's a step in the right direction. It's all about how you fit that into your lifestyle that really matters. So I think the biggest thing for me is letting people know that, hey, like I'm human too. Yeah. I posted a story like two days ago of me. Like sometimes I go on like a junk binge. I have a bad sugar addiction every now and then. <laughs> I um, mean, and so- it lights up our brain. Who does it? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So I've got Jolly Ranchers and cookies and chocolate and I take pictures of it. And I tell people like, hey, this is what my life is like when I'm not conscious about the nutrition choices that I'm making. And it put me in a state of health temporarily where I was feeling gut discomfort and I was having brain fog. But, you know, okay, now what? I prioritize my hydration and I try not to elevate my blood sugar. I exercise. Um, and within 24 to 48 hours, I'm feeling much better. And I think if people, I want people to realize that, hey, like you may find yourself in that space where you've got all that junk in your house, but as soon as you make a decision to to do better, the the health that you're looking for is is so attainable with the right steps and the right approach. Oh, I love that.
Well, you're a, not only are you a metabolism mentor, you're a husband and a, and a dad of four, and you're just managing everyone's health. And it sounds like you and your wife are an amazing team and care a lot about your children's metabolic health. So right. how does it look in day in the life of you for your, your family's eating? So we actually take, we try to take a hands-off approach with their nutrition, at least the, the older kids, because um, I walk around with, you know, this patch on the back of my arm and my kids are now looking at me like, ooh, dad, if you eat that, you're going to spike your blood sugar. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> they get to That's the point so funny. It, it really is. Like they, they definitely uh, hold me accountable. <laughs> Yeah. for the food that I'm eating, um, but they understand. And so there's this concept that my wife and I are kind of playing around with called self-directed nutrition. And it's a spinoff of what's um, called self-directed learning. So that's the, we have our children in a self-directed learning academy and they're completely in charge of their education. So they get a curriculum and they guide themselves through the curriculum. And our kids have stepped up to the plate and they take full accountability for their education. They meet their own deadlines. They, um, they, they don't have homework, but they stay on track with their learning. And it's just been the most amazing thing for us to see them develop and rise to the occasion. So our thought process is, hey, maybe they can do the same thing with nutrition as well. And a part of the self-directed learning is failure. And us allowing them to fail and allowing them to um, get negative feedback from their peers and from their teachers so that they can learn from it. And we do the same thing with their nutrition. So there will be days, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, my nine-year-old, almost nine-year-old, um, hadn't eaten all day. And my wife and I, we kind of play, um, we play tag with parenting. So she might parent the first shift of the day. And then I get home and she's like, tag, you're it. And yeah. then I'm in charge and she's like, hey, um, Austin, Camden hasn't eaten all day and he's starving. So I'm okay. I come in the kitchen and I'm ready to help him prepare some food for himself, but I don't see him. He's missing. So I go into his room and I'm like, hey, Camden, I thought you were hungry. And he pops out of his bed. He's got crumbs all over his face. And I'm like, dude, he's eating healthy cereal, which, you know, is not really healthy. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, Camden, like, we talk about this. Like, we talk about the importance of eating protein and fat, like, with meals like that. So I'm like, what was your thought process in choosing that as your food? And you know what he said, Kelly? <laughs> he said, you know what, Dad? Sometimes it makes me feel good to eat food that I'm not supposed to eat. And I'm like, what am I supposed to say? You're like, true that. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. Because laughs> that's, that's me too. But taking that approach to their nutrition allows us to have those honest conversations. Like, hey, that happens to me too. And that's why sometimes you see me walking around eating a cookie because it makes me feel good. But let me tell you how I feel afterwards. And let me tell you how you're going to feel after you eat that. And then after we have that conversation and I'm like, hey, do you want to feel that way? And he says, no. Then we get into, okay, now what do you think you should eat? And he's like, mm, I should have some protein and maybe like some food or something. And then from that point, he goes and um, makes his own meal. So Ugh. that's kind of our approach to self-directed nutrition. Let's touch bases again in 15 years to see if it works. Yeah. No, I just want to say, just first of all, how admirable it is that you and your wife seem to parent like so cohesively as an as a really great team, and that you are empowering your children to take responsibility for themselves to learn how to fall down and get back up. Like you're teaching this resilience through their education, but now through nutrition, that's real life. That's real world. Like we are going to yeah. fall. Things are, we're going to make mistakes. People get fired from jobs. They fail classes. Like that, that's life. And like get, being able to get through that just makes you so much stronger for adulthood. And not that we want our kids to like grow up so fast or something, but like, I can only imagine how proud your children are of themselves when they fall down and they get back up and they complete something on their own without mom and dad. Absolutely. And you know how hard it is to watch your kids hurt themselves or fail or, or make bad decisions, but it's so necessary for, for growth. 
And that's that's how I learn. It's through through failure. And taking that approach with nutrition, it's it's almost like a double-edged sword because on one hand, children are in their developmental years are, are so fragile and and what they eat is literally making up their tissue that you know, help them operate their body. So it's walking a fine line with keeping them healthy, but then giving them the autonomy to make sure that they're healthy. Right. Well, Sebastian's only three, so I'm still making family meals, but I know it's funny. Anytime I put out content around kids eating, I'll have the comments you know, on Instagram that are like, wait till your kid's six, wait till your kid's nine, you know? And it's, you know, it's never a point to say that it's perfection. Like, mm. like I said, my husband orders donuts. Dash doesn't have a smoothie first. He's waiting for that donut. He eats that whole donut. But if there's like an emotional roller coaster that happens after that, I will, even at three, sort of break that down. Like sometimes the sugar makes us feel happy and excited and we use all that yeah. energy really fast. And then we feel really tired or we feel like kind of frazzled. Like I try to use those words so that he can identify that. And not to say that these things are bad or to label them, but just to like explain the process. And I, I love that you explain the process. I love that you're coaching your clients this because we can't just sit in this space of, of not understanding how our food breaks down and say, don't label every, every food is, is good. It's, you know, we don't want to label foods, but at the same time, like to not educate people is disempowerment. Right. That's true. And a part of that education is, is getting on their level in a way that they can actually understand. And so when I, when I create like a, a content or a, a piece of content or a video, I always think about my favorite teachers growing up. And I've had teachers with I'm like, oh man, I had an economics class in college and I, I failed so miserably. And Hard I said, <laughs> as a, a typical millennial, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> it was the professor. He was so dry in the way he presented the information. He just told me the information. And that type of learning, it just didn't work for me because I didn't care enough about that information. I didn't care about economics. I was just trying to get a business degree. And the truth is, a lot of people don't care about nutrition. They just don't care. So how can we present this information to them in a way where even if you don't care about it, you're still going to pass the class. And I've had teachers who like broke this stuff down to me where it's like, okay, you may not care about accounting, but you do care about money and you do care about buying, I don't know, your favorite tennis shoes. Let me show you how accounting plays into your dreams. And so that's like, when it comes to teaching, getting down on people's level with that information is, is crucial because I've talked at people before and it just, it just doesn't work. It's, it's not an effective way to, to teach people. And if you want that lasting change and you really want to create uh, what my wife and I call generational health, then it's, you know, it's imperative to actually make sure that the information is resonating. There are so many health coaches and mentors and nutritionists and people that tune into this show. That is such, first of all, it's such a great piece of advice because it, I mean, that resonates with me. And like, if, if someone's telling me how I can buy a house or get the infrared sauna I want by learning how to save, like that accounting is obviously way more interesting. Right. What advice do you have for coaches trying to get on someone's level? Like what questions are you asking to mm -hmm. understand what your client's goals are? Right. Um, you know, I think it's really tough because everybody is different. And as a coach, you have a limited bandwidth. Mm -hmm. You can't, unless you have a very like high dollar coaching package and you're doing one-on-one -on -one stuff, but most coaches have a lot of clients and it's yeah. really hard to tailor information to individuals. Um, I think it's important for people to know who they're talking to. So for me, what's really important to me is like, improving the health in, in my community, the black community. And so I make very specific cultural references that people that look like me would understand. Yeah. Um, for example, there's um, a popular app that takes 
um, popular recipes and tries to deliver them in a low carb um, manner, which is super helpful. But they had this potato salad recipe. And I don't know, Kelly, if you know how important potato salad is in our community, <laughs> but it's got to be made a certain way. Um, and going through this this app, it it just, I don't know anybody that looks like me that would eat potato salad like that. Yeah. And so... If well, I first am, of all, I would like to be educated. So, what is your what is what is the Black community's potato salad recipe, and how uh -huh. do I make it for my family? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, this is a recipe that I'm sure we all. There's so many different ways to make it, but um, the recipe that I saw on this app was um, you just it was like cut the potatoes in half, you put them in a bowl, and then you put a bunch of mayonnaise on top, some dill and um, some peas, and then you mix it up. And that was a potato salad. Yeah. And it might be delicious to somebody, but I personally would pass on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my potato salad, I wanted the potatoes to be boiled and then I want them to be peeled and put in a pot and mashed. And yeah. then you can't use mayonnaise, you gotta use sandwich spread, okay? okay. So you put sandwich spread in, um, and then um, sometimes my dad will um, put some boiled eggs in the potato salad. Oh yeah, some relish. Um, and so it's like you, you mix all these things up, and then it's like, okay, that's the kind of potato salad that I want. But if I did want to take a potato salad and make it low carb or make it glucose friendly, then that's where I would start because my number one priority is to reach people that look like me. Right. So putting out. A content or teaching people about this complex stuff starts with understanding like who they are and why they eat what they eat, why they do what they do. Um, and then you develop your um, your messaging based on based on who people are because America is and just globally we're a melting pot and everybody has a completely different approach to doing things and one person's messaging is not going to resonate with another and that's why we need all hands on deck when it comes to this metabolic health crisis because um kelly your messaging is going to be it's going to resonate with some people and then with others it's not going to resonate and it's right. the same thing with me my um very relaxed and goofy approach to metabolic health might make somebody say, oh, no, I can't take them seriously. And to the next person, it's like, man, this really helped bring it home for me. Um, so for coaches, I think it's really important to to really understand your client, to, to try to cross those cultural barriers, to understand why, like what makes people tick and like what's important to them at a cultural level. I love, I just seriously love you for owning the community you want to support and for meeting them with the recipes that, yeah, like I would be guilty of making that stupid half cut <laughs> dill covered mayonnaise potato salad, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't know. I mean, it, it's exactly what you're saying. Like there are, we are a melting pot and there are so many communities in need and, we know that the black community has higher rates of diabetes. We need you even more. Right. And it's, it is, it's one, even just, I mean, we made the ex example of like maybe a doctor who's using uh, mitochondria and <laughs> insulin resistance and like throwing these terms around, like meet people where they are. And if someone, if you're a coach and you identify um, with a specific community or you are a part of that community, like, help that community and meet people yeah. where they are because we all we all need this information to really be empowered to change our life and support what you're calling generational health. Yes, absolutely. And it's I think the the culture piece is so important because in a lot of communities, health, exercise and nutrition, it just looks different. Right. And if what my doctor is telling me is not something that I'm culturally, um, if it's just not culturally culturally relevant for me, or if my friends aren't doing it, if my family isn't doing it, then the chances are that I'm not going to adopt those habits. Or if I do adopt those habits, if I'm not around um, people that are going to support that action by doing the same thing, then the likelihood of me adapting that and continuing it are low. Right. So 
Um, yeah, it's just, and it, it's tough, man. You know, it's, it's really hard to, you know, I have videos on my page where I'm sitting down and I'm talking to some of my friends and I'm like, yo, I had, um, salmon and pancakes for breakfast because I understand the importance of like having protein fat. Salmon is a perfect mix of protein and fat, um, and eating it before carbs. And I didn't put syrup in my pancakes. And he's like, bruh, I'm not eating salmon with pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not eating pancakes without syrup. Yeah. Uh, and so like those like nuanced conversations are, it's, it's really hard to get past people's nutritional and taste bud and cultural preferences to adopt something that's going to give them some longevity. Right. Um, it's an uphill battle. Like, it's something that I'm passionate about. I'll be doing this until I'm dead. I love um, it. I'm so <laughs> curious about like, what are some cultural norms in the black community that you are coaching people through? Um, mm. I know the potato salad is an example and the pancakes are an example. I'm sure you're like, here's some monk fruit syrup, but <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> They're like, no, I'm not going to have that syrup either. Uh, not I, have, <laughs> I have clients who say that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what are, what are some, uh, yeah. What are some cultural norms that you're trying to like break down and mm -hmm. um, support your community through? Um, well, actually, we're my wife and I. We're so we have a production company that works with um, different corporations to produce content that just shines light on some health disparities and um, the metabolic health crisis. And we're working on a portion of the campaign that's called Soul Food to Whole Food. So your soul food is your, um, you know, the macaroni, the greens, the cornbread, um, just. Foods that, that taste good, the fried foods, um, the, the fried chicken, um, the whole nine. And yeah. I think that um, food in the Black community is, is and always has been an emotional experience. You know, uh, it's something that like you, you can't put a value on grandma's recipe. You know, right. I was talking to a friend and... Um, he was asking about how to make, I think it was, I'm not sure, cornbread. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not sure how many ways you can make that. That would be good for your metabolism. Yeah. Um, and he was just like, well, this is my grandma's recipe. It means so much to me. How do I stop eating like this meal that was passed down from, you know, generations before me? Um, and so... I think it's important to validate that, to to say like, hey, like, no, food is it is fuel, but it's also it's very emotional for people, um, and that's not just in the black community. That's across several different cultures. Every culture has their staple dishes that they eat when their families get together, and it's not going to change. Right. Um, so my thing is um, specifically to my community is I'm not necessarily trying to change your like what you eat i'm not saying you can't i don't want to say you can't have anything i want you to have more of the food that is important in our culture i just want you to do the things that are going to allow you to enjoy those foods um and so on my youtube channel uh, a few days before thanksgiving i made a video that talked about how to still enjoy thanksgiving dinner without having the itis afterwards because like that's the thing it's it's a normal thing like people are like yo and for some reason we uh glorified the itis i'm not sure how but <laughs> it's like yo i got the itis and people are slumped over and then they wake up and they're having cravings again so you get your second plate yeah. um so instead of, of putting yourself through that roller coaster ride um and instead of completely abstaining from thanksgiving because who's going to do that Let's <laughs> put some strategies in place. Let's let's I don't know, play um I play your favorite song. We love to dance. Um and you know, if you put on some uh some old school like some Marvin Gaye or some um some Tina Marie or whatever the case is, we're gonna get up, we're gonna dance. You can do the, the Cupid shuffle, the electric slide. Um, you're gonna get up and we're gonna do those things. And me telling you to uh, incorporate some sort of exercise, your favorite exercise, dancing, um, 
is a way for you to still enjoy the foods that are important to you while looking after your health. So it's not that I don't want to change what's important to you. Food is it's just too personal to us and that's not going to change. And I think we should cherish that. Um, but let's cherish it in a way that's going to allow us to still have energy um, after we eat it and to to live long, healthy lives so that we can actually contribute to society in a meaningful way and in the best way possible. Oh, your strategies are so refreshing. You're so down to earth and meeting people where they are and just acknowledging, just acknowledging that food is love and yeah. you can support people to take soul food and make it whole food. And if it is that cornbread recipe from grandma and it's, it's not really much, no one's going to have cauliflower cornbread. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> yeah. no. We just can't, no, we can't wreck that. We can't wreck that recipe with some type of cauliflower. <laughs> So exactly. it's, you know, it's, it's finding the time and having the strategies to, to have those rituals really, you know? And so I'm curious, is there a recipe that you have to have in your family that you make? And what are some lower glycemic recipes that your kids and family um, love? So me personally, I don't have a very... I don't know if I could take a pill with 3000 calories a day and be done, I would do that. Um, my relationship with food is like, it's no big deal. I actually don't enjoy eating. Um, but um, thinking How of is like, that my possible? brothers or my parents, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. Like I, I will eat the same thing every single day just because it, I, it works for me. I'll have my, my oatmeal with, three tablespoons of almond butter and you know a whole bunch of other stuff. But I, after I figure out what works in my body, I just want to repeat that forever. Like that's good for me. Yeah. Um, but my brothers, my, uh, my aunts, um, my parents, um, my mom makes a, a really good um, red beans and rice that I'll always eat um, when we go there. Um, rice, chicken, spinach, and gravy is delicious. My dad makes amazing cornbread. Um, so those are recipes that I personally wouldn't um, adjust. My personal strategy is if I'm going to indulge in those things, I just either I'm going to eat it in moderations and do the same for my kids or eat something healthy prior to so that I'm not like guzzling down four slices of my dad's famous cornbread. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, my personal relationship with food is different, but for people and their recipes, I really think that we should and often enjoy the foods that we want to eat without changing the recipe. Because I think, I personally think that changing your favorite recipes is going to set you up on a yo-yo trend where you might change this, this cornbread recipe or you might do the cauliflower or you might swap out grandma's favorite potato salad for the one with peas and mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but eventually you're going to get tired of that. Yeah. And then you're going to just, you're going to go back to what you know, and there's not going to be a middle ground. Right. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, I think that I'm huge on enjoying the food that you want to enjoy, but just putting those strategies in place so you can actually do that. I'm curious how Levels has supported you to do that. And I mean, for those people listening, you, you mentioned the black patch on the back of your arm. Can you explain what Levels is, how you use it, and how it's informed your eating? Yeah, so Levels has been awesome. So uh, for those who don't know, Levels is um, it's a software company, and they provide tech that allows you to monitor your glucose continuously. And their app is really intuitive. It scores your meals on a scale of uh, one to 10. And it allows you to see like, hey, which, which foods are giving me energy and which foods are taking energy away from me. Um, and it allows you to make some really objective food decisions, which is really important. Um, for me personally, honestly, my, 
my metabolic health has completely transformed since I started using Levels, not just from uh, a data standpoint, but just wearing a patch on the back of my arm, knowing that I'm going to have a response from the food I eat, it motivates me to, to change the way that I eat. Um, and it's funny because I noticed that the, when I have junk that piles up in my house, it might be the result of two weeks of me not monitoring my glucose and not getting that initial feedback from the foods that I'm eating. Um, but their support has been just tremendous. Um, they are 100% down. Um, they understand how important it is to um, reach our community with this technology. And it starts with just educating people on what it is. And it's so funny. Like, I'm going to a friend's house. And as soon as I walk up, it's like, oh, Austin got the patch on the back of his arm. <laughs> uh, he can't have that because it's going to spike his glucose. Yeah. And so it's like this thing where um, I'm the, you know, the glucose guy yeah. of my friends. But it has it's given me the opportunity to have so many real conversations with people about um, their health and how monitoring their glucose will be helpful for them because let's face it, having your glucose measured once a year, it's kind of pointless to be completely it's not honest. Cut it. yeah. <laughs> it's not going to cut it. Um, that, that one second snapshot um, is a fraction of the data that you could be using to um, really take control of your health. And having that continuous glucose monitoring, being able to explain to my friends like, yeah, your fasting glucose was 92 six months ago. <laughs> Mine was too. But like, look what it is now after these habit changes. And my personal fasting glucose was in the 90s. At one point, I was pre diabetic. Wow. Um, uh, and then after I started monitoring my blood sugar, like my blood sugar, when I first started monitoring, I was frequently having excursions up into 130 to 150 milligrams per deciliter. Um, and now I have a hard time breaking 110. I'm trying. I have days where I'm like, let me, I'm eating oatmeal with no fiber, no fat, no protein. Um, and still my, uh, my body has become so much more insulin sensitive. And just the habits that I've implemented from the knowledge I've obtained from using levels has completely transformed my metabolic health to where I can enjoy those occasional indulgences because my body handles it better. Um, and that's like my ultimate pitch to people is like, hey, listen, I'm not trying to take that food away from you. I just want you to put yourself, like, let's call it a metabolic boot camp for a few weeks, a few months, and get your body in a better position where when you do eat that, you're not, you're not taking a roller coaster ride to 150 milligrams per deciliter because we know studies show that um, every time your blood sugar spikes, you're contributing to um, an insulin resistant state in your body. Um, and then you're going to crash and have fatigue and all this other stuff that goes on. So let's not take the food away. Let's just improve the state of your health, monitoring your glucose so that when you do have that, I don't know, and that donut or whatever, Maybe you'll go up to, to 110 and your body will handle the, the carbohydrates a little bit better. I love it. Metabolic boot camp, motivating people through this continuous glucose monitor and being, I mean, you're, you're keeping it light and I'm sure teasing them and joking Absolutely. around and wearing your patch and being yourself, but yeah. also motivating your community and your friends and your family, I'm sure, just to to take a look at their diet and maybe consider doing something like this. Cause look at that, you were pre-diabetic and now you have a hard time breaking 110 and you're having oatmeal. Like there are so many people out there that are having oatmeal every day in a pre-diabetic state and they don't understand why, because they, exactly. they read the information like, isn't oatmeal healthy for you? Isn't oatmeal fiber loaded? Yeah. But you learned firsthand and you were hands-on with it and you're helping your community do the same Gosh. Yeah. And everybody deserves to have the opportunity to learn how their body is responding because you can read study after study. You can read the labels on the food and you can take all the best practices in the world, but nothing is going to compare 
to you seeing firsthand how your body is responding to the food that you eat. Um, nothing compares to that. And Levels has been like, it's it completely changed everything for me. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is I feel the same exact way. And I think people would think that I just, because I love blood sugar and been talking about for 10 years, that I don't indulge or I don't have periods of time where I'm like, what is happening? I am eating all the chips and crackers from like two to five in the afternoon, but I'm a normal human being. I didn't grow, I, I maybe didn't work at Wendy's, but I can tell you, I make all the frozen foods from Costco really well, <laughs> from bagel bites to taquitos to like Uncrustables, you name it. Like, I don't know, my parents acted like we were, I don't know, there was going to be like an earthquake and we need to eat frozen food for the rest of our life. But yeah, I mean, it's just, if there's something about having the patch on and knowing like, well, I could scan my arm and know exactly what this is doing to me and you clean it up. And even exactly. if one person in your house is wearing it, people are cleaning. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's so funny because my mom... Um, and you know, like with your parents, there's always that like that relationship where they don't want to listen to you. Yeah. Um, but man, like just over the past several months since I've been monitoring my glucose, uh, my mom will send me pictures of her breakfast, and oh. it's like, hey, um, is this gonna spike my glucose? And it's like some a little bit of eggs and like a, a big old pancake with some syrup on it. And I was like, yes, yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, you know, eat some more eggs and maybe like eat half of the pancake and tell me if you're full and then she'll do it and she'll feel better. And for me, it's so, I think the opportunity to, um, to walk people through that, um, levels has given me a sense of authority where all I'm doing is talking about my own personal journey. Um, and through that, it educates other people. So now I can go to my mom and I'm I'm cooking her dinner and it's like I'm going to cook you some salmon and I'm going to make a salad and with some quinoa in it and then I'm going to explain to you why and then after she eats she's like oh my gosh I have so much energy and I feel so good and it's like yes like yes <laughs> that's it you get it well Austin I mean you are an authority you have taken in all the information you're telling your story in a, such an approachable way inspiring your kids your mom, your family, your community. I mean, we need people like you on the ground, like doing that hard work because we need to support our everyone across our country and around the world. Like the, these diabetes rates, you know, hypertension, they're through the roof. And first of all, I just want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and sharing your story. And for, I know how much effort it takes to put content on online, but it is, you're a real change maker. And, um, and I just want to acknowledge that. So thank you. thank you. I really appreciate that. That has been so refreshing, especially to hear again, such a full circle moment from watching those modules in the mind, body, green, um, to this. And it's only been, shoot, I don't know, two years, um, since I've really like started digging into this and it's been awesome. Um, I've, being able to have really good conversations with people and I'm looking forward to, to having more. Yes. And if there's anything, I'll say this to you or anybody listening, like this content creation stuff is, um, it's really fun for me and being able to impact people through content creation. So if there's any, ever any, I don't know, any opportunities or if you want to like, just I don't know, DM me and say, hey Austin, what do you think about this? I'm a hundred percent open. I'm always respond. Um, anything that will improve the, the metabolic health crisis in this country, I am so down for whatever it takes. Well, your your passion shines through. You are a star and you're soaring, man. So even though it's only been two years, you can just feel the passion coming off of you and just, yeah, your like wonder and curiosity. Like that's what we need. Um, and it really, like I said, you're a change maker. It's, it's making a big difference. So thank you for your time and your effort. And I'm glad it's fun for you because we need you to keep doing it. Yeah. And for everyone listening, where can they, where can they go follow along and, and yes. watch your content and be a part of your family and your community? Yes. So uh, my Instagram is where I'm most active, uh, Metabolism Mentor. Um, and then through there, you'll see I have a YouTube channel, which I'm, you know, trying to keep putting content out. But there's this work-life balance thing yep, <laughs> yep, yep. that's going on. 
Um, but yeah, Metabolism Mentor is the best best place to find me. That's where I put out most of my content. Oh, Austin, you're the best. I will link to everything in the show notes and Jervis online. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Be Well by Kelly. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Learn more at bewellbykelly.com and follow me on Instagram at bewellbykelly. I would love if you picked up my books, Body Love and Body Love Every Day. They're sold on Amazon and at all major booksellers. 